Hello everyone, David here. Now, I really like Adobe software. I think it's really powerful and very slick, but I hate their pricing plan. And some months have gone by when I have not used their software at all, but I've still paid for Photoshop, Lightroom, or something else. Now, a couple of years ago, I made the jump from using Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and I actually ended up liking it so much, I paid for the full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio. And I'm so glad I did that, because I've never paid my Premiere Pro subscription since then. And I really like Resolve. I think it's really powerful. It does everything I want. And also a couple of years ago, I tried to make the jump from using Lightroom to Luminar 4, and I almost did it. It sort of did a lot of the same things I wanted, but not quite as well as Lightroom, if I'm honest. And it wasn't quite as performant. It took longer to load each photo and to skip to the next one, and it took longer for the sliders to take effect. It's something I noticed at the time, but after using it for a while, it became so annoying, I had to go back to Lightroom. So today, I'm going to try switching from Lightroom to Capture One Pro. And it's had a lot of improvements over the last couple of years. I think it's a really valid alternative now, and I think it's going to be more performant than Luminar was, at least when I tried that a couple of years ago. The reason I picked Capture One Pro is because you can still buy a license to use it in perpetuity. Um, they do have a subscription model as well, but I want to pay the full £300 and just own it forever. Because I don't have photo gigs that often, and I kind of just want to buy one bit of software that will work and I can stick with. So come with me on this journey and we'll see if I can make the change and hopefully never have to pay my Adobe subscription again. Let's go. three main things that I'm going to want Capture One to be able to do, hopefully as well as Lightroom. And the first of all is filtering. So I want to be able to go in and select the pictures I want, flag them, and then filter so that I only see those while I'm making adjustments. Secondly is the actual changes themselves. So I want to edit each photo in turn, changing the exposure, brightness, contrast, maybe do denoising and using the healing tool maybe some linear or radial gradients. Nothing crazy, but I want them to be able to work quickly and I want to see the results immediately. And finally, it's exporting. So once I've got my hundreds of pictures ready to go, I want to just right click, export them all and get them all batched into the same folder together so that they're ready to deliver to my client. So let's see if Capture One is up to the task. Okay, here we are in David Addis Studios. I'm back, I've taken all my photos and now I'm going to try and edit them with Capture One. Uh, I'm recording my screen, so let's uh, shrink me down into the corner. And can we outline me as well? Good. Okay, so uh, this is Capture One. I'm coming at this pretty fresh. I mean, I have tried it a tiny bit, um, but literally just for like 10 minutes uh, in this version. And I have tried it a couple of years ago, but it might have changed a bit since then. So I'm gonna stumble through this with you and uh, give you my verdict at the end. Although I expect you will have a verdict too. Okay, so first we want to actually get the images that I'm interested in, and I suspect you come up here to import. I keep everything on an external drive, so I've got all of my photos sort of relevant to um, like gigs. So let's just see if I can import these and be done with it. Um, so I'm gonna try and import everything first, and then we'll see if it's clever enough to only pick out the RAWs. Now this is something that Lightroom did, and it basically, if it detected if there was a JPEG and a RAW next to each other and then only showed you the RAW. And it looks like Capture One does not do that. Oh, you know what, let's just cancel this. <laughs> and I'll just go and pick the RAWs instead. This time I will sort by type in Windows. So this is all the RAW files. I'll go and drag all of these, sorry, Shift and Select to select all of those. And then Review for Import. Right, import all, let's go. Um, right, so it looks like it's generating previews, but uh, I think I can just jump right in anyway. So, okay, first things first, it is pretty quick to select between the pictures, so that's great. That's actually what I wanted. Now, is there a cool keyboard shortcut so that I can flag them to keep in my list of edits? So I can rate them and then sort by the rating. So that's fine because then in its most basic form, I could rate all the ones I want to keep as five star and then just show them 
five star and above. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is rate the ones that I think are okay as three star, the ones that are good four star, and the amazing ones five star, so that it kind of reflects how good the pictures are. And then if I've got loads at the end, I can actually be a bit more uh, picky about which ones I filter to. So that's cool. Uh, so let's get rid of that filter, and now let's go through the arduous process of selecting all of the photos that I'm going to edit for this job. Okay, let's go. This bit is boring, so I'm probably just gonna spin on a bit and you'll see what I want to do in fast motion. So how many pictures have I got that I think are okay? Let's do a search for three star or higher is 197. So that's a lot. I don't really want to deliver 197 pictures, and I know that some of them are kind of a bit duff or duplicates. So what I'm gonna go through now is um, be a bit more picky, and to do this, I'm basically going to unflag them by selecting zero. So I'll keep the filter on, and when I select it as zero, I expect it to disappear from the list, and it does. Okay, right, see you in another couple of minutes for me, but seconds for you. Okay, one thing that's really nice is that if I accidentally remove a photo by ranking it as rating zero, then I can actually control Z, undo, and bring it back. Um, really nice touch there, capture one, well done. So far, I'm quite enjoying this. Uh, it seems to work how I expect, and now that it's generated all of the thumbnails, it's really snappy to get between the pictures. They just instantly show up. So you might look at a picture like this and think, oh, well, Look, that's not very good, but actually, if I crop it to kind of pretty much just his face and arm, that's going to be quite an interesting portrait of him, and I'll get rid of all of this, like, unused space. So I think this photo is uh, rescuable, um, just requires some pretty harsh cropping and um, some, yeah, tweaks in exposure and stuff. Okay, so that's down to 148 pictures. Uh, now, let's start doing some edits. So it looks like I can still just sort of scroll through all of these pictures as I see fit. And then when I, when I want to actually make some changes, well, it looks like I can select these buttons up at the top left. So go to adjust. Yeah, this will do the exposure. And that is reacting really nice and quickly. I'm very happy about that. Right, I'll, uh, I'll start doing all of my adjustments. It's taken uh, 39 minutes just to do the selection. Um, so let's start with the adjustments. So this is just a pretty standard picture of the station that you come out of if you want to go to the, the dance freestyle. So the first thing I want to do um, is I'll just crop it a little bit because I don't really like this uh, clean streets bin on the side. Let's see if I can bring that in. And uh, yeah, it's defaulted to keeping the aspect ratio, which is not what I usually want. I usually want it to be free. So let's do that. And then how do I kind of view it with the cropped view? Oh, okay, I select a different tool. Maybe there's a better way of doing that. So if I'm in adjust mode, can it do some automatic adjustment? So auto adjust. Ah, so you can, you can tell it which settings to auto adjust. That's really cool. So, it's going to change the exposure, high dynamic range and levels. So let's let it do its thing. And it made it a bit brighter. Not by much, but a little bit. Ah, I see, okay, so there are different layers. So this is a bit different to Lightroom. I can actually hop back and forth between the heel layer that I made and the background, which got auto adjusted. Okay, well, as long as it's quick, I don't mind it doing that. Uh, let me rotate freehand. Okay, yeah. Well, that's working how I would expect it to work. Okay, so I seem to have gone into a weird state where it it's deleted a picture from, from the catalogue, but I want to get it back. And when I try and re-import it, it says it's already in the catalogue. Aha, I found it. It was not a bug. What I'd actually done was I'd moved the images from the catalogue into the catalogue trash. So now I just want to basically go and restore these. Yeah, okay, so you can drag them back into the, the catalog folder there. Okay, mostly I'll concentrate on cropping and exposure settings to start with. 
Okay, so when you auto adjust, I find it does make things quite a bit brighter, a bit more than I wanted on that picture. Yeah, so I've got into a nice rhythm now of kind of going into my next picture, um, adjusting the settings, and then adjusting the crop. And once I've done this for all of my pictures, I can then go in and make slightly more complicated edits after that. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of starting to feel a bit more familiar and comfortable. And the most important thing for me is that it's reacting quickly. So I'm going to be able to go through all of these pictures as, as fast as I can. I'm not going to be waiting around for the computer to do stuff as well. So let's crack on. So I've just discovered that the cropping behavior is something Capture One changed in a recent update. So you can change it back in the preferences for the program. So if you go to edit, preferences, and then over to crop, you can select this from use variant aspect ratio to use global aspect ratio. And that way, when you select a new picture, it will go into that unconstrained cropping mode by default, which is what I want. And it might be what you want as well. Hello again. It is now tomorrow, or I suppose I should say then was yesterday. Um, I finished editing all of the photos. Um, I took a few out and by far and wide the biggest changes I did were just to the exposure and cropping. Um, but I did have to adjust the white balance on a lot of other photos, especially as um, the lights came on in the, at the dance event. And um, I also definitely had to do some denoising. So I've sort of got one good sample photo here and I wanted to take you through my process with this one. Uh, the very first thing I do um, is go into cropping and I found that this is C on the keyboard to get into cropping mode. And I'm just gonna bring that in a little bit so that it focuses a bit more nicely on my subject. Something like that. And it doesn't automatically kind of select it and re uh, expand that area. Um, I press H to go back to the hand tool for moving and then you can see it fill the screen. So you can notice that there's clearly a really strong red and purple tint. Uh, so I'm also going to go in and adjust the white balance and just drag that away from purple and a bit away from yellow to make it cooler. And there's a point at which they just sort of ping um, into looking like real people and suddenly they look so much better. Now, I have been using the auto adjust button quite a lot, um, but it definitely overcooks it. So what I do is I generally press auto and then kind of pull back the exposure and shadow a bit more. Boosting the shadow just kind of makes the whole photo look um, too homogenous um, if you have it too high. So you do actually, rather than leaning too heavily on adding contrast after, just make sure you don't overdo the shadow would be my advice there. Um, and that's sort of mostly the changes I would make to this photo and then move on to the next one. Um, but there is a little bit of noise. So if we zoom in, just going to use the mouse wheel here, you can see there is quite a lot of noise going on and uh, noise reduction is on by default, but you can boost it by dragging these, um, by going to the refine tab up here and then just boosting these up. So this is doing noise reduction using luminance and I can increase that. I can allow it to decrease the detail to actually soften everything a bit more um, and even boost the noise reduction using colors. Um, and uh, that sort of has the result of, of reducing all of this noise quite a lot. Uh, you can see it in the zoomed picture up here or you can zoom in on any particular photo. You know, obviously the face is gonna be the most important bit that you want to look the most right in all of your photos. I've also been experimenting with linear and radial gradients. You just go and select this tool up here and then drag from the center where you want the radial uh, gradient to start or the center of it to be and then adjust the radii that way. And then you're given this new adjustment layer, which is just for the gradient. And then you can go and adjust that to what you want. So if you want to make it like a sort of typical vignette kind of thing, just go and decrease the exposure like that. There we go. And that's the photo I'm pretty happy with. I just had to do that 130 times for all of my photos. Although some of them were much simpler. Some of them required uh, more drastic cropping. So the picture of this guy, um, I originally <laughs> took this rather wide shot. Um, and thought, well, really, I just want to focus on him. And so 
cropped it pretty harshly, but it did mean I had to use a lot of noise reduction because after I'd zoomed in and then increased the exposure quite a lot, uh, it had quite a lot of noise in it, so I just wanted to counteract that. Okay, so I'm happy with all of these edits now, so I want to select the lot and then export them in one fell swoop. So can we do that, Capture One? I press Control A to select all. Can I go export? I'll go export dot dot dot, so I get to change all of my settings. Okay, so I'm gonna select JPEG, full size, highest quality, because I'm delivering them to my client over the internet. Um, and let's say subfolder, put them in a folder called processed. Okay, export 131 images, go. Let's have a look at how it's doing it. Is it doing it entirely on the CPU or could it be using the GPU at all? It is using my GPU to do some encoding. So that's good. That kind of suggests that this is GPU accelerated and that should make the export process much quicker than it would be otherwise. Yeah, it's still using the CPU as well, but it's not actually using all of my CPU cores flat out. So um, that kind of also suggests they balance the work between the CPU and GPU. That's probably a good approach actually to um, try and make the most of most systems. Okay, so I'm sending over the files by WeTransfer now to the client who is Kieran at Ciroc, um, and I think he's going to like them. I really do. Uh, so I've now sort of finished that gig with Capture One, and I have to say, I am really impressed. I think it's improved a lot since the uh, two years ago when I tried it for the last time. And in fact, at the time, I remember thinking Luminar was a more likely contender for a Lightroom replacement. But now I think Capture One is, has probably taken the lead. Um, I'm still very indoctrinated in the Lightroom way of doing things. Um, and I kind of expect things to move along the bottom instead of along the side. Um, and there are some other kind of short key, shortcut keys that I expect to use. Um, but I feel like I can probably reprogram myself and get used to the Capture One way of doing things. There are a few other things that I feel like Capture One didn't do quite as well. Um, like, uh, yeah, when you crop a picture, just grabbing hold of the handles at the edges um, seemed like it was a little bit fiddly on my 4K monitor and I could occasionally miss them and that was just a tiny bit annoying. Um, but you know, again, it's not a deal breaker. Um, I found the noise reduction wasn't actually quite as strong as I would like. It feels like in Lightroom you can really crank up the noise reduction and end up with quite a soft photo if you want, but with the noise removed. Um, there were a few times in Lightroom when I sort of used noise reduction not just to reduce the noise, but also to reduce the clarity of the photo if I did just want to soften it a bit intentionally. Um, so I'd kind of like it if Capture One could make their noise reduction stronger than it is, um, kind of make it go up to about 200% of what it is now. Yeah, I think like getting used to doing things in layers will take a little bit of um, getting used to as well, because whenever you do any healing or add a gradient, or any sort of brush stroke actually to make um, an adjustment, then it adds a new layer just for that change. And if you're not paying attention, you might try and change something in the wrong layer. So you might try and change a global setting, which you want to take effect over the whole photo, but actually it only takes effect on like a small mask that you may have just drawn. So yeah, you've got to be a little careful um, that you don't do that bit wrong. Um, but yeah, in general, it's all very powerful and very quick to respond and I like it, and I'm going to buy it. And the cool thing is, um, because it's Black Friday week right now, if you buy it right now, you can get 40% off the price. So it's usually £299, but if you get it right now, you can get the Black Friday price of £179, which makes it really reasonable. And if you bear in mind that the Adobe Photo Plan costs £10 a month, then after 18 months, um, you would have actually spent as much on a subscription as it would just to buy this um, right now anyway. Okay, so that's it. I'm buying it um, and uh, I'd love to know what you think. Uh, could it replace um, Lightroom in your life or are you too dependent on the Adobe way of thinking or do you just like Photoshop so much that you need that as well? I'd really like to know, so please leave me a message in the comments section down below. There you go. If that video was entertaining on some level, leave me a like um, and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.